everyone coming from abroad was suspected to be infected and forced into a quarantine that was not 14 days but for 30 days. And that's the origin of the world quarantine. The practice of isolating Anuel has been around for ages. The Bible makes reference to isolating people with leprosy in the first half of the 13th century. Hospital known as Lazaretus were constructed outside Venice to keep the sick away. The word quarantine, however, originated a little later in the mid 14th century. Uh, the time of bubonic plague or Black Death. The disease wiped out one third of the European population in, within three years. Uh, so you can imagine the devastation done by the plague. So in Venice control, the official passed a very strict rule. Uh, a 30 days isolation uh, at that time, the main mode of communication was the sheep and men. So uh, they decided to 30 days isolation for sheep arriving from the affected area. These ships were kept under lockdown and had to anchor for 30 days before crew and passengers were allowed to climb us off. Outsiders were not allowed to enter the ship either under the warning that they would be isolated too. Over the years, practice of quarantine was adopted in several Mediterranean cities. With time, however, the isolation period was increased from 30 to 40 days and changing the term quarantine to quarantino. Actually, the word quarantino, the English word comes, is quarantine. Why? Yeah, the, actually, this quarantine, quarantino means 40. The English word come from that quarantino. It is now we, what we are saying that is quarantine. It may have something to do with the fact that number 40 days, uh, from where this 40 days, the concept of 40 days come, there is so many belief is that there may be religious or cultural feeling uh, is there that uh, 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 Christ is said to have fasted for 40 days in the desert. Moses spent the same amount of time on Mount Sinai. Catholic was observed laying a 40 day spiritual cleansing before their uh, Easter. Aside from the religious differences, an explanation may lie in the Hippocratic belief that 40 days mark the crossover from an acute disease to chronic. And uh, there is another uh, thought is also that one person, if he is infected with the plague, uh, he will uh, he uh, died within 39 days. So uh, there is a 14 days quarantine implemented at that time. But if he survived, then uh, he will come back after 39 days. So there is a uh, implementation of 40 days quarantine. And at the same time, we are seeing the, con the con lockdown. The concept of lockdown is also not a new phenomenon. Around September 19, 1896, one case of plague was detected in Mandavi. But uh, now it is uh, Mumbai. Uh, that, that time it was Mumbai. Now it is Gujarat. Mumbai President was even one of the most densely populated areas due to rapid growth of the uh, commerce. And uh, every week there is reported case of 1900 death in take that time in India. So that time uh, India was under the Queen uh, British rule, British rule, and they swiftly uh, passed a act uh, in their parliament. It was then that the Epidemic Act 1897 was enacted by the British Parliament to curb the spread of pain. So uh, uh, it is the now what the lockdown uh, implemented by our central government or the state governments. Actually, that act implemented in the year 1897. And uh, in that uh, act, uh, there is a provisions to inspect the person family, segregation of people suspected of being diagnosed. So what we are uh, seeing that was actually implemented in the year 1897. That means log 193 years back. Now, uh, if we analyze the trend of pandemics, we notice that mortality rate has decreased in the case of COVID-19 day by day. Every uh, from uh, uh, pandemic or epidemic, whatever we see that the mortality rate has decreased. We know now the science and technology, medicine, science, they are increasing. So in case of COVID-19, we see its spread has been mainly due to free movement of modern man. It shows how globally we are connected to each other. However, if we compare the administrative measure to curb the pandemic, in the past with the present, we see that despite the latest advancement of science and technology in the past, effective measures were taken. The administrator understood that during those days, novel mode was the only mode of communication between different countries, and so the isolated ships coming from the affected countries. But in case of COVID-19, what we have witnessed that despite the WHO's declaration that COVID-19 is a pandemic by January 15, still up to 23rd March, international flights were allowed in our country. 
So this is the situation. We now look forward to our eminent speaker to enlighten us on, on this topic. And once again, I want to thank all our invited speakers, participants, and the member of our organizing committee for organizing this national seminar. And I wish a grand success of this national webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Principal, sir, for your uh, well informative speech. Uh, so it's, it was really informative speech. Uh, from that, we can understand that uh, this isolation, quarantine, social distancing, it's not a new kind of thing. It's not a new phenomenon. Earlier also, I mean, this world faced various uh, epidemic like uh, cholera, plague, and all these things. Uh, so on that time also, there is different kind of rules law and different things so i will not take too much time our first speaker is professor aurobindo samanta uh, eminent eminent historian in the field of history of epidemic science medicine uh, he teaches several decades at wadon university in the department of history he was associate with the welcome trust for history of medicine uk and postdoctoral fellow at university college of london Rockefeller Archive Center, New York, USA, and GNU. He also teaches in uh, various other uh, eminent uh, universities in national level, in international level also. He published several articles and book chapters, uh, several book chapters uh, in this field related to history of uh, the social history of medicines, malaria, etc. His recent book, uh, which is uh, <clears throat> living with epidemic in colonial Bengal, 1818 to 1945, published from the Monor, which is quite popular and uh, excellent book to read. So as I told, I will not take too much time. I Now I request to Professor Aurobindo Samanta to deliver his lecture. Uh, I just want, uh, uh, just want to say something, uh, just, uh, we'll take questions in a in chat box after delivering two lectures. Uh, then we will discuss about the questions. So please, if you have uh, participants have any questions, uh, write it down in chat box. Thank you. Now I request to Professor Aurobindo Thank you. Thank you, Professor Aurobindo. Thank you, well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Sandeep and Devas is my four good friends for inviting me to this webinar and giving me an opportunity for sharing with you some of my ideas about epidemic and society. I'm particularly happy because I'm sharing a platform with Professor Deepak Kumar, uh, my old good friend for many, many decades and my main inspiration for such writing and research. Uh, well, uh, epidemics, as you know, have always had profound impact on society. They have informed, so to say, the trajectory of human history all over the world. Epidemics have always struck terror in society and have left dramatic impact. Human society, has always been overwhelmed by devastating blow of uh, bacteriological invasions, all the way from Periclean Athens to Black Death in the 14th century in Europe to Sub-Saharan Africa in the 20th century. Diseases have indeed had such a compelling effect on the contemporary society that Western historiography in the past three decades has brought to bear the notion of social construction of disease in its account and sought to explicate how people of the West understood, coped with, and tried to prevent various infectious diseases in their several ways. Now, I'll be trying to engage with such a theme in Indian context. I'll be talking about plague in India in the late 19th and early 20th century. You know, uh, I'll be exploring uh, two things, so to say. 
uh, my presentation will explore first the differential perception of people to the epidemic plague that ravaged Eastern India. We are very much familiar with the uh, story of plague in Bombay, but I will be engaging in the same story in Eastern India during the closing years of 19th century. Uh, I'll also uh, describe uh, how, uh, describe about the interaction between people and the state in the struggle with epidemic. And secondly, as a corollary to this uh, story, I'll explore the multiple ways in which the rhetoric of Western medical intervention was contested by a popular construction of the disease. My primary objective here will be to capture the reality of the epidemic in its social setting. You know, the studies done so far on epidemic plague in India, as I, I have already told, generally concentrate on Bombay. Uh, to David Arnold, you know, uh, the upsurge of public resistance to state's intervention in Bombay was due to cultural differences and its repugnance to Western medicine. To Raj Chandra Barker, on the other hand, the widespread hostility that was exhibited in the plague of Bombay was due to the most coercive manifestation of a brutally intrusive state. To Ida Klein, again, it was a conflict between Western anti-plague measures and popular culture. But what about Eastern India, which also shared with Bombay the phenomena of resistance to Western medicine and uh, preventive state measures, widespread rumors, panic and scare, riots and strikes? Did it attract a similar kind of government intervention and the same form of popular resistance. Now, I'll be uh, mainly focusing on the popular response to this epidemic plague in Eastern India. You know, popular response to plague manifested in various forms. They are very much varied in its expression. People reacted differently at different times to the government's acts of omission and commission. Now let me begin with rumor. What sort of rumors uh, were floated during this epidemic plague in Eastern India, particularly in Calcutta? The measures uh, taken by the government were in fact designed with the sole object of preventing the spread of plague among the people and of protecting them from its ravages. But the motives of the government were always suspect at different times, rumors circulated that the government desired to poison the people. The object of its action was variously stated to be, say, from reduction of uh, abundant population, the spread of the disease in order to deter foreigners, particularly the Russian, from invading India, the seizure of people's money and property, uh, propitiation of plague demand, and the permanent consolidation of British rule in India. Among other absurd rumors was one, that the intention of government was to interfere with and destroy caste and religious observances with the ultimate design of forcing Christianity on the uh, native people of India. Again, it was rumored that the Viceroy had met a yogi in some remote part of the Himalayas and promised he would sacrifice two lakhs of human lives to the goddess Kali, the mother, to save British Empire in India. Uh, let me uh, relate uh, the story as narrated by one Bengali uh, famous novelist, Premankur Atharthi, is Mahasobi Jatak. Uh, you know, Premankur Atharthi is a celebrated Bengali novelist. He recounts one such humor. I'm translating from the original text. One day, the news spread that one woman arrived at Howrah Station by Bombay Mill and then moved forward to Calcutta after hiring a carriage. When she, when she reached Harrison Road, that is the present uh, Mahatma Gandhi Road in central Calcutta, the carriage driver asked her, which place do you wish to go? The woman replied, didn't you know who am I? I am the goddess of plague. 
then all on a sudden she disappeared this story spread like a wildfire and people started shouting plague 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 everywhere better free the city now people believe that plague had besieged the city and the only way to saving life consisted in fleeing there are there were other rumors which with which uh, those rumors sometimes with uh, you know material base uh such rumors were floated as our principal sir was you know, talking about the question of quarantine that three days quarantine would be enforced that no one would be allowed to leave calcutta port uh, port with what went around that plague workers on the european soldiers would visit every house to examine men and women and that the infected persons would be immediately removed to hospital it was other rumor that the viceroy was to visit calcutta on 15 may 19 uh, i mean 1898 when men and women would be inoculated forcibly the soldiers would be called out soon and inoculation enforced compulsorily with plague serum made of the blood of cow it was even rumored that the queen had abdicated and gladstone the prime minister had died of plague and that the emperor of russia was marching far fast to calcutta now side by side there was a huge panic around this uh, story of the uh, plague you know south asians in calcutta believed that the people of humayun and garhwal used to flee from their homestead whenever they noticed rats dying in numbers and a few of the few of the residents calling victim to consequent uh, plague they would build a new homestead nearby abandon their old clothes and put on new ones they considered this change of residence a routine function as their experience taught them that they would be absolutely safe in their new dwelling places by contrast the people of bengal behaved in a very different way in the year of his first outbreak of plague in calcutta writes rabindranath tagore in one of his novels uh to be more precise chuturanga people were panic stricken and extremely anxious not so much for the dread of the disease but uh, more for the portion and persecutions that were inflicted upon them by the peons and orderlies who went with their official badges on uh, the city of calcutta you know was thrown into utter confusion when rumors real or fabricated spread all were afraid of being infected particularly concerned about the possible violation of the privacy many fled the city by land water or railway people began to escape for three days a continuous stream of people began to pour out of the city like an army of ants the fear of the carriers and the palanquin increased fourfold or sometimes even eightfold if a carriage or palanquin were not uh, available in spite of offering impossibly high fares people had to settle for bull of course or even a scavenger's cart even these were not available to the less fortunate whose women were compelled to walk along the main streets open in public view scorching by the midday sun scorched by the midday sun the exodus was marked by a still more pathetic sight there were such stamps on boards seats and frames that many lost their belongings still more had their limbs broken and huge number of people were separated from their kin many lost their lives in the sunstroke you may be reminded of the you know immigrant labor which is happening all over india you, uh, you know mothers lost their kids and several pregnant women women had to face the danger of child birth in route in this way no less than one third of the city's population deserted the predominant fear was being examined rather than the disease itself they further apprehended that the plague workers would enter the houses and examine the women of the household freely surely outraging their modesty in the process uh there were also street rats everywhere throughout uh, almost all streets of calcutta uh let me quickly uh, narrate the story how street uh, rats took place 
file sweepers, scavengers, water carriers, porters, and laborers of the city of Calcutta struck work and ceased to attain to their respective duties, ruffians and hoodlums took to looting and instigating riot. They killed several vaccinators, beat many innocent gentlemen mercilessly, and even murdered them, taking them for vaccinators. Clerks were prevented from attending office. Those who disobeyed had their heads smashed. They broke tram cars, burned down cars carrying plague patients, and even trying to damage and burn down hospitals. It was as if a torrent of unrest had overrun the city. People considered their Egypt to be threatened when they were subjected to corporeal inspection. The examination of railway passengers traveling to Calcutta at Khana Junction had evoked vehement protest. Passengers were ordered to alight and wait in a queue after being segregated by sex. They had been publicly inspected by a European doctor. It was humiliating to them and to their Egypt of the female folk. It was only after considerable protest that curtains were provided for women and female doctors were employed to conduct the examination. Sarochanda Chattopadhyay in his Sikanto narrates uh, how uh, Sikanto himself and other passengers, male as well as female on board, on their way to the Rangoon, not to Rangoon, are subjected to humiliating medical inspection. So callous and indifferent was the doctor in his examination process of even the private parts of passenger that Sarochanda thought even a stop doll would have cried out in protest. Now there was a, a, a certain amount of uh, segregation here. Segregation uh, some, uh, that, um, that uh, may present amount to you know, uh, quarantine. But people were segregated, those who were uh, suspected of having plague. It was generally believed that anyone infected by plague or was suspected of carrying the germs would be summarily removed to the hospital by the plague workers. The belief that during illness or even on his deathbed, he would not be able to see his family, children, or relatives, and to be comforted by them was disturbing. There had been a tremendous exodus from the town in consequence of the panic caused by the report that everybody suffering from the disease would be taken to segregation camp for treatment. Crowds of men and women thronged the streets of Calcutta, the thoroughfares uh, you know, presented a scene that was shocking, and the railway stations were so overcrowded that many of those who had gone there were obliged to return home. The cart pullers, coolies, methods, and hungers had struck work and gone back to their uh, respective village homes. Home servants and cooks were also leaving the town for fear of being inoculated or segregated. It was becoming more difficult to get washermen to wash clothes. The domes were perhaps hardest hit by the plague regulation. The provisions of the clothes contaminated by plague disease, disease was to be uh, either burned or disinfected. Now, it was a direct intervention with, their earn, with the earnings of the domes. The Hindu social customs enjoined that the clothes of the diseased uh, would neither be burned nor destroyed, but be assigned to the domes. But the plague regulations deprived them of such rights. What still, the domes now interpreted it as an encroachment on their rightful claims. For the domes generally sold their diseased uh, clothes and bedding to the market to make money. There are also by incident, I mean, scare uh, related to concealment. They used to conceal the incidents of plague as such. Now, plague hospitals were, you know, uh, a very dreaded site. An alarm spread that a person subjected to suffering from an attack of plague had been carried away to the isolation hospital at Manikola, Calcutta, which had no provision of separate ward for the treatments of Muslims and the Hindu patients. To allay the fear, it was suggested that Boitok Khana, or the ground floor rooms of the uh, outer block of Bengali Bhadral of dwelling houses, might be allowed to, to be used as segregation hospitals. However, 
most people believe that a patient infected with plague was forced to take poison in plague hospital in the guise of medicine, which brought instantaneous death. People regarded plague hospital as the temple of Jomo, the house of horror, the place of healing, the sinner. He has gone to Manikwalas, became a euphemism for he has gone to his last resting place. Now, ambulance vans also was another site for uh, scare, and you know, uh, it was also a contested site to be said. The ambulance van was also dreaded. Rumors were applauded that it was constructed in such a fashion and its interior smeared with such deadly poison that even the healthy were conver converted to corpses. People dreaded that ambulance vans more than death. They believed that when a patient was put into it, his sufferings would be immense, and the disinfectants made the van more uncomfortable. The people argued that the parallel key uh, should uh, instead be used to carry the patient to the hospital. And now, uh, there also uh, the incident of rat killing. You know, rat destruction had been very unpopular with the people for religious really reasons, and had more often than not, you know, received little or no. Uh, cooperation on the part of the public. Uh, particularly, the Marwaris objected vehemently to the killing of rats in North Calcutta. They dealt in food trains and venerated the rats as the Bahana or the carrier of Lord Ganesha, the presiding deity of trade and commerce. It was also argued that any reduction of plague population by trapping could only be temporarily, only be temporal, temporary or marginal because rats breed so rapidly that they soon replace the casualty. A still more objection to rat destruction by trapping and baiting was that the infected rats were not destroyed. To kill rats when plague were raising merely released plague infected fleas and increased the chance of people being more infected. Now, let me conclude. Uh, if one uh, uh, one, uh, I mean, perusing contemporary literary uh, tracts and vernacular periodicals uh, emanating from colonial Eastern India, it appears in retrospect that the incidence of plague was popularly viewed as a visitation of uh, yeah, visitation of fate, and as such, one must submit to it with patience. People are also distrustful of the methods which Western science had pointed to as the most uh, effective for the protection of public health uh, or from protection of the epidemic diseases. So added to this, both Hindus and Muslims viewed with greatest dislike any intrusion into their homes and especially any possible interference with the privacy of their women. Among Hindus, again, the caste system and its elaborate rules prevented intimate association, such as feeding people in common, in case of the city of Bombay, the greatest opposition was experienced from the Sunni Muslims and especially the Konkani Sunnis. In the case of Eastern India, the riots, strikes, and disturbances were the action of the marginalized social groups, both Hindus and Muslims, the municipal coolies, the scavengers, the sweepers, the carters, the butchers, the darwans, manual workers, mm -hmm. railway coolies, mill workers, etc. People who were, who were hit the hardest by the plague regulation. You know, the situation can be compared with Pandahapur, Maharashtra, and Manjri Kamath has done an excellent study of the strategies of creation of the plague regulation of the pilgrims. There, the pilgrims and the local people contested the government policy of sanitation, uh, sanitary regulation in an indirect way. Their strategy was not overtly aggressive. But in Eastern India, particularly in Calcutta, people responded in multiple ways. It ranged from an use of evasive tactics to open defiance or art. But the incidents of plague had been really severe. The people had readily given information to the plague authorities and had sought their aid. They had also, to some extent, taken refuse from it in flight. But once the virulence of an epidemic, that is, virulence of plague, had abated, and the fear of death was no longer before their eyes. Their attitude had throughout been one of 
not of actual hostility or at least of intent indifference to precautionary measures and unwillingness to undergo the slightest inconveniences in order to guard against future calamities. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you uh, for enlightening us regarding the plague in the Eastern India. And uh, we also now can compare with the present scenario of what we are facing, all these things. Uh, our next speaker, eminent historians, uh, Professor Deepak Kumar. Uh, it's a very tough for me to introduce, uh, sir. Uh, what I say, he is an itself uh, institutions in the field of history of science, technology, environment and medicine. In fact, uh, young research scholar now use the term, particular term, the histone, which is uh, popularized by Sir Professor Deepak Sir. Uh, he teaches at JNU more than probably three decades. He was also a uh, visiting professor at Oxford University, University College of London, Chicago University, and many other eminent universities in worldwide in several countries. So uh, he has wrote many books. His famous book, Science and the Raj, the Study of British India, which is published in 2006 from Oxford University, PS, which is uh, uh, known as the pioneer work in the field of history. Uh, so recent books also the Three Sankhu Nations, Memory, Self and Society in Contemporary India, which is also published from the OOP in 2016. Apart from the, um, that, uh, he has several edited books with uh, such like with uh, Professor Roy McLeod, Technology and the Raj, Western Technology and Technical Transfer to India uh, with Professor Rasekhar Basu, Medical Encounters in British India, etc. So uh, we are highly honored and pleased to have Professor Kumar to, uh, on a, uh, to share his thought, agree to share his thought in this webinar. Now I, I, I invite Professor Deepak Kumar to deliver his lecture. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Devashish. Uh, 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 I'm grateful for the opportunity. Uh, you told me that I'm supposed to speak in Hindi. Do you think it would be okay? Yes, sir. Uh, I think, uh, it will be. I'm sorry. I forget to tell you. Can we, if you speak in Hindi, so that will be better. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, would, I was under the impression given uh, someone to speak in Bengali. But anyway, <laughs> thanks for the permission. I was very happy to be here. I was very happy to be here. I was very to be here. I was very happy to be here. I was very happy to be Dr. Kavita Ari, Sir Mudula Ramana, I was very happy to be here. I was सीखा है मेरा अपना कोई खास बहुत काम नहीं है लेकिन फिर भी सबों को पढ़ने का बहुत मौका मिला और हम इसके लिए इन सबों के आभारी हैं इन्होंने मुझे बहुत कुछ बताया सिखाया इनके काम ने और आई एम इंडीड वेरी ग्रेटफुल आजकल जी वक्त बड़े खराब चल रहे थे पिछले कुछ महीनों से परेशानियां बढ़ी है एक कसम के होम क्वारंटाइन में हम सभी बैठे हुए हैं ये क्वारंटाइन शब्द मुझे बहुत पसंद नहीं आया था जब बहुत साल पहले हमने पढ़ा लेकिन अब क्या ये नहीं सोचा था कि इसी जन्म में मुझे क्वारंटाइन भुगतना पड़ेगा है ना तो बंद बंद हैं और इस किस्म से टेक्नोलॉजी का सहारा लेके आपसे मुखातिब हो रहे हैं बट कम से कम यह यह भी कुछ नहीं कुछ तो है जरूर कुछ तो फायदा हुआ तकनीक के सहारे हम आपसे जुड़ तो सके तो इसके लिए हम आभारी हैं आपके कॉलेज के हम मैं आभारी हूं प्रिंसिपल साहब ने भी बहुत अच्छी तरह से डॉक्टर बासु ने भी अच्छी तरह से पृष्ठभूमि रखी सब उनके सामने और प्रोफेसर सामन ने तो काफी गहराई में जाकर करके खास तौर से बंगला सोर्सेस से बहुत सारी चीजें निकाल करके कि महामारी का क्या इंपैक्ट होता है और कैसे लोग इससे परेशान होते हैं उतावले होते हैं इसकी चर्चा की हम इसके विषय आपका है दोनों वर्तमान और अतीत 
तो मैं वर्तमान पे बाद में आऊंगा पहले अतीत की बात की जाए ये सभी जानते हैं कि भाई हमेशा रही हैं यह मानव जीवन का अंग रहा है मानव इतिहास का अंग रहा है पहले भी हमारे पुराने चिकित्सा विज्ञान के शास्त्रों में पांडुलिपियों में इसका उल्लेख है कि यह जनपद विध्वंसक है महामारी शब्द जो है उसको कहा गया था संस्कृत में जनपद विध्वंसक तो विध्वंस तो होता था और इसकी लेकिन और इसके उपाय भी कई किस्म के बताए गए बहुत तरह के ज्वर चरक संहिता में आपको मिलेंगे दो बातें मैं इस सिलसिले में खाली कहना चाहूंगा मुझे प्राचीन भारत के ऊपर बहुत ज्यादा ज्ञान नहीं है बहुत प्रभावशाली ढंग से मैं नहीं रख सकता लेकिन दो तीन चीजें जरूर स्ट्राइक करती एक तो ये कि हमारी जो प्राचीन संगीताएं हैं चाहे वो चरक संगीता हो या सुसु संगीता हो और भी बाघ भट्ट के और बहुत सारे जो निघंटू लिखे गए हर हर जनरेशन ने निघंटू लिखा टीका टिप्पणी लिखी इन सभी टीका टिप्पणियों में और आ, मानक ग्रंथों में यह बात बिल्कुल स्पष्ट है कि ये सारी चीजें बड़े सोच विचार के साथ युक्ति के साथ पेश की गई थी एक शब्द आता है युक्ति भेषज चरक संगीता में युक्ति भेषज का मतलब ही था रैशनल हालांकि आयुर्वेद की शुरुआत हमारे वेदों में मंत्र के साथ इनकेंटेशन के साथ है ग्रीक सिविलाइजेशन में भी मेडिसिन इमर्जेज आउट ऑफ मैजिक लेकिन धीरे धीरे वह मंत्र से लेकर कहीं ऊपर हमारे व्यवहारिक ज्ञान से सिंचित होकर वह एक प्रॉपर ज्ञान के रूप में विकसित हुआ और वह ज्ञान धीरे धीरे युक्ति सम्मत होने पर विज्ञान के रूप में तो ज्ञान तभी विज्ञान बनता है जब उसमें युक्ति लगती है जब वह एक प्रॉपर प्रोसेस से गुजरता है जिसको आप हम आज साइंटिफिक मेथड कहते हैं वो मेथड था और ये सब जगह देखा जाएगा ये ये नहीं है कि जितने निघंटू लिखे गए या टिकाएं लिखी गई ये सभी पुरानी चीजों के सिर्फ एक्सटेंशन मात्र थे नहीं इनमें जोड़ घटाव होता रहा तो कई किस्म के ज्वर की बात हुई सब कुछ दूसरी चीज जो मुझे इसमें लगी कि वैद्यक एक महत्वपूर्ण अंग था समाज का इसमें कोई शक नहीं और मजे की बात यह कि वैद्य पेशेंट के पास जाता है मरीज के पास जाता है मरीज वैद्य के पास नहीं जाता आरोग्यशालाएं जो हैं वो पढ़ाने के लिए हैं वो टोल वैद्यों के हैं लेकिन वैद्य को बुलाया जाता है हमारे अस्पताल का कंसेप्ट बाद में आया मेरे ख्याल से वह तेरहवीं चौदहवीं शताब्दी में मुझे याद है मैंने प्रोफेसर अपने टीचर एस एच अस्करी साहब काटकर पढ़ा था हॉस्पिटल इन मिडिवल इंडिया बहुत बहुत साल पहले उन्होंने लिखा था तो उसमें वो जिक्र करते हैं कि सूरी ने जब ग्रैंड चर्क रोड बनाया शेर शाह ने तो उसमें कई जगह बीच बीच में ये बनाए गए थे बीमारिस्तान तो बीमारिस्तान का कंसेप्ट जो है वो बाद में आया है लेकिन उसमें पेशेंट को रखे गए ये भी बीमारिस्तान है चौदहवीं शताब्दी में बहुत जबरदस्त एपिडेमिक का प्रकोप है गुजरात में उत्तर भारत में उसका उल्लेख आता है कई हमारे जो ट्रेवलर अकाउंट हैं चाहे वो बर्नी का हो और भी बहुत सारे हैं जो पर्शियन में हैं अकाउंट्स और बाद में यूरोपियन ट्रेवलर्स जो हैं फ्रांसवा बर्नियर और भी कई सारे जो सोलहवीं सत्रहवीं अठारहवीं शताब्दी में सैकड़ों यूरोपियन ट्रेवलर्स आए उन्होंने कई दफा बीमारियों का जिक्र किया और बताया है कि यहाँ पे किस तरह से उसका निदान पोर्चुगीज खासतौर से यू नो आपने ना, नाम सुना होगा कि पुर्तगाल ये गोवा में और मालाबार कोस्ट पे जब विदेशी आए हमारे यहाँ से घुल मिल गए ट्रेड किया अपना राज्य भी स्थापित किया तो उन्होंने चिकित्सा पद्धति का खास तौर से अध्ययन किया था गार्सिया दौड़ता की किताब और, और दोनों में बड़ी की चीजें घुल मिल गई थी बहुत चीजें घुल मिल गई थी आ, और कई चीजें ऐसी भी हुई कि हमारी चिकित्सा पद्धति को जो 
आयुर्वेदिक चिकित्सा पद्धति को नई चीजें सीखने का मौका मिला दोनों से यूनानी से भी और जो यूरोपियन अपने चिकित्सा पद्धति लेकर आए उससे भी आ, अगर आप कंसेप्ट के रूप में देखेंगे तो वैचारिक स्तर पे देखेंगे तो इन सभी पद्धतियों में कोई बहुत मौलिक भेद नहीं सभी ह्यूमर के मुताबिक चलते हैं सभी इन्वायरमेंट वातावरण के मुताबिक चलते हैं उन्नीसवीं शताब्दी में भी म्याजमा थेरी ऑफ डिजीज है जिसमें वो बात की गई कि भाई ये इस वजह से क्योंकि मलेरिया मैल एरिया एरिया खराब है मैल है इस वजह से तो वैचारिक दृष्टि से पिस्टमोलॉजिकल दृष्टि से बहुत भेद नहीं किसी के चार ह्यूमर है किसी के तीन ह्यूमर है किसी ने कुछ ज्यादा वेजिटेबल प्रोडक्ट से निदान किया किसी ने उसमें कुछ चीजें और ऐड की उसमें मिनरल्स ऐड कर दिए या उसमें और तरह के चीजें लगाई गई मांसाहारी चीजें तो हमारे यहाँ पहले भी दी गई थी औषधि के रूप में चरक संहिता में आप देखेंगे तो शायद ही कोई जीव होगा जिसके जिसके मांस का उपयोग किसी खास जोर में न किया गया हो इसकी इस रूप में सूप के रूप में तो इसलिए ये आपस में मिलते जुलते रहे चौदहवीं शताब्दी में एक बड़ी मजेदार पांडुलिपि बनी मियाँ बोहवा की मादल शिफा सिकंदर शाही सिकंदर शाह लोधी का वक्त है और इस मादल शिफा में वो आयुर्वेदिक और यूनानी दोनों को जोड़ के चलते हैं मिला के चलते हैं कई शब्द जो कि फारसी के थे वो संस्कृत में आए संस्कृत के शब्द फारसी में चले गए कई नई किस्म की चीज नाड़ी परीक्षा पहले से थी लेकिन मूत्र परीक्षा शुरुआत हुई है यूरिन टेस्टिंग तो इस तरह से कई चीजें दोनों में घुलती मिलती रही और लोग अपने अपने तरीके से दोनों लोकल बीमारी और महामारी दोनों से जूझते थे दोनों चीजें थी लोकल भी लोकलाइज भी बहुत सारे हर वक्त होता था तो स्वास्थ्य और अस्वास्थ्य के बीच का यह टेंशन हमने कोशिश की अपने हिसाब से रिजॉल्व करने की और कहते हैं कि बहुत ज्यादा फिर भी क्षति उस जमाने में नहीं थी हिंदुस्तान ने कभी भी वो ब्लैक डेथ यूरोप वाला ब्लैक डेथ नहीं एक्सपीरियंस किया था अंग्रेजों के आने के पहले वैसा एक्सपीरियंस नहीं था कि लाखों लाख लोग एक साथ चले जाए कुछ तो खास बात होगी या तो पॉपुलेशन बहुत कम था लैंड मैन रेशियो फेवरेबल था भोजन संभवतः ज्यादा सुलभ और ज्यादा पौष्टिक रहा होगा जो भी वजह हो यहाँ पे ब्लैक डेथ जैसा चित्रण हमें मिडिवल और एंशियंट लिटरेचर में नहीं मिलता है जो महामारी आप यूरोप में देखें कुछ बीमारियां तो पहली दफा भारत में देखी गई जिसको हमने फिरंगी रोग कहा फिरंगी रोग कहा मिनेरियल डिजीजेस और वो बहुत तेजी से फैली हिंदुस्तान आज अस्पताल के मॉडर्न अस्पताल का जिक्र होता है लेकिन अस्पताल का उद्भव जो है वह तो लॉक हॉस्पिटल से है जिसमें पेशेंट को लॉक किया जाता था और वो पेशेंट होती थी हमारी पीड़ित स्त्रियां जिनको इस किस्म की विनेरियल डिजीजेस बीमारियां लग जाती थी उनको बांध के रखा जाता था लॉक हॉस्पिटल में कलकत्ता में पहला लॉक हॉस्पिटल इसको आप जानते हैं तो और भी कई जगह पे लॉक हॉस्पिटल खुले ये भी एक सेग्रीगेशन ये भी एक कस्म का करंटाइन है लेकिन ये जेंडर स्पेसिफिक करंटाइन है जिसमें बांध के रखा जाए और यह भी काफी तकलीफ दे था इसमें कोई शक नहीं है धीरे धीरे जैसे महामारी को हमको बराबर अर्थ से जोड़ के देखना चाहिए महामारी सिर्फ शारीरिक रोग नहीं है शरीर तो इफेक्ट होता ही है लेकिन महामारी कई दफा आर्थिक स्थिति से भी उत्पन्न होते हैं और अर्थव्यवस्था को प्रभावित तो करते ही समाज को करते ही झकझोर देते हैं तोड़ देते हैं जो आज आप खुद भुगत रहे हैं स्वयं देख रहे हैं हम भुगत रहे हैं तो महामारी को बराबर समग्र सोशल साइंस के दृष्टि से देखना चाहिए सोशोलॉजी ऑफ मेडिसिन हिस्ट्री ऑफ मेडिसिन एंथ्रोपोलॉजी ऑफ मेडिसिन इकोनॉमिक्स ऑफ मेडिसिन हेल्थ ऑल दीज थिंग्स हैव टू बी 
ब्रॉट टूगेदर इनको एक साथ देखा जाना चाहिए ये एक मौका है जो अभी इस किस्म के विपदा ने हमें दिया है कि कैसे इन सबों को एक जुट ला कर करके और एक इंटरडिसिप्लिनरी पर्सपेक्टिव में इनको हम देखें फर्क इसमें और भी दो तीन और भी हैं कल्चरल दृष्टि से भी अभी हमारे प्रोफेसर सामन ने सही बताया कि भाई कई लोग चूहा मारने के खिलाफ थे वाजिब बात है क्योंकि इसका रिलीजियस कॉन्टेशन है लकीली अभी वाले वायरस में ये तो वायरस है ये ये जो है सो जिस जानवर से आया भी अगर मान लीजिए चमगादड़ से तो वो हमारे किसी देवता का से एसोसिएटेड नहीं है बेचारा चमगादड़ को मारना शायद उचित नहीं होगा लेकिन उसको हम इजीली देख नहीं सकते वायरस को दूसरी जगह में बैक्टीरियल जो महामारियां होती थी उसमें उसको पकड़ पाना और उसको समझ पाना वो फिर भी आज के मुकाबले में वायरस रिलेटेड स्पेशली जो कि सिंगल आरएनए से चल रहा हो जिसकी कोई जीतने तक नहीं हो वो ज्यादा अभी का मामला ज्यादा कठिन हो गया लेकिन फिर भी उस जमाने में भी अठारवी उन्नीसवीं शताब्दी में जब इस तरह के एपिडेमिक्स आए महामारियां आई तो लोग समझ नहीं पा रहे थे क्या वजह है क्या हो रहा है ज्यादातर 1880 तक आप देखेंगे किसको मियाजमा के रूप में देखा गया और थैंक्स टू द जर्म थ्योरी ऑफ डिजीज जो कि पास्चुरियन रिवोल्यूशन के साथ 1860 के दशक में आगे आया लोगों के सामने आया तब ज्यादा ध्यान इस बात पे दिया गया कि आखिर इसका कॉज क्या है इटियोलॉजी ऑफ द डिजीज हमारी जो मेडिकल ट्रेडिशन रही है मेडिकल सभ्यता रही है उसमें हमने Why and how पे कम ध्यान दिया हमने ज्यादा ध्यान दिया इम्यूनिटी आज भी इम्यूनिटी की बात हो रही है सभी कह रहे हैं भाई आप तुलसी आंवला गिलोई पता नहीं क्या क्या आप तो किसी बाबा ने इलाज भी निकाल दिया कल मैंने पढ़ा तो अब तो इलाज विलाज सब आ गया अब तो कोई डरने की बात ही नहीं <laughs> तो, तो इस किस्म की चीजें उस समय भी चलती थी उस समय भी लोग यही कहते थे कि आप अंदर से मजबूत हो जाएं ये खाएं वो खाएं ऐसा ना खाएं ऐसा करें है ना शीतला हुई चेचक बहुत हुआ तो बस आप जैसो बिल्कुल हल्का खाना खाएं मूढ़ी दूध खा के रहें और शीतला की पूजा करें ठंडा रहें तो चलिए लोग सोचती वैसी लेकिन वाई एंड हाउ नहीं पता चलता था कि आखिर ये चेचक होता क्यों वेरियोलेशन मेथड था वैक्सीनेशन बाद में आया वैक्सीनेशन वेरियोलेशन के बीच में सबसे बड़ा फर्क यही है कि वो फिक्स्ड है वैज्ञानिक दृष्टिकोण से जेनर का यह बिल्कुल बड़ा ही जबरदस्त जिसको कहते हैं पैराडाइम शिफ्ट है यह अठारहवीं शताब्दी के अंत में जबकि उन्होंने किस कुछ जीवाणुओं को फिक्स किया तब से वैक्सीन बना वैक्सीन का यही मतलब है कि आपने डोज और उसके अंदर जो जीवाणु है उसको मृतप्राय करके या जिंदा भी रखा तो कम से कम फिक्स किया ये फिक्स करना विज्ञान है मनुष्य को फिक्स करना विज्ञान नहीं यह आत्मघाती है लेकिन लेकिन आप माइक्रोब को वायरस को फिक्स करें तो उसमें बुराई नहीं है तो वह आपके फायदे में जा सकता है तो ये 1860 के दशक में आपने जर्म थ्योरी ऑफ डिजीज जो है वह अपने आप में बहुत ही बड़ा पैराडाइम शिफ्ट माना जाएगा और ऑफ कोर्स ये पश्चिम से आया लेकिन हमने इसको अपनाया हमने भी इसको समझने की कोशिश की कुछ इसके खिलाफ भी बातें हुई लोगों ने अभी तक अभी भी ऐसे बहुत लोग हैं जो डार्विन को ना मानते हैं तो ना माने र्यूमर उस समय भी होते थे र्यूमर आज भी है पोलियो के खिलाफ पोलियो वैक्सीन के खिलाफ आज भी र्यूमर है तो र्यूमर तो रहते हैं बराबर क्योंकि इंसान अंदर से तो कमजोर है ही सिर्फ आर्थिक रूप से कमजोर नहीं वैचारिक स्तर पर भी कमजोर है तो इसीलिए उसको अवलंबन चाहिए उसमें भगवान अवलंबन मिल जाता है कुरान अवलंबन मिल जाता है पुरान मिल जाता है तो लेने दीजिए कुछ नहीं कर सकते लेकिन इसका अर्थ यह नहीं है कि वो समझते नहीं थे कि और भी तरीके हो सकते हैं इस बीमारी से निजात पाने के लिए इसके इसके पहले कि मैं इसके एक दो उदाहरण लू मैं दो तीन बातें और कहना चाहता हूं कि, कि जब ये 1850 के बाद का जो वक्त है 60, 70, 80, 80, 80, 80 का जो दशक है 1860 से लेके 1900 तक का जिसका जिक्र प्रोफेसर सामन ने भी किया 1898 वगैरह ये 40-50 दशक जो थे इसमें 
हम हम गुलाम थे और जो ब्रिटिश सरकार जिस तरह से काम कर रही थी हमको ये बात बराबर सोच ध्यान में रखना चाहिए कि कॉलोनिज्म इज नॉट फिलंथ्रोपी वो खुद यहाँ दान पुण्य और आपका सेहत बनाने थोड़ी आए थे वो तो अपनी सेहत बनाने आए थे अपनी आर्थिक उन्नति के लिए आए थे पैसा लेने आए थे इसमें बुराई क्या है तो चाहे पलासी से लेकर कर करके अब और उन्नीस तक सत्रह सो संतावन से लेकर उन्नीस तक जितने दुर्भिक्ष हुए अकाल पड़ा जितनी पेस्टिलेंस हुई कोई ना कोई तो वजह थी क्योंकि उसको सही ढंग से हमने हैंडल नहीं किया हमारी जो भी सरकार थी हैंडल नहीं की अरे हमारी तो आज की इंडिपेंडेंट सरकार नहीं कर सकती हैंडल बेचारे अंग्रेजों को काय को गाली दें जब हमारी सरकार के नाक के नीचे लाखों लोग सड़क पे चल पड़े और किस हालत में चल पड़े आपने फोटो देखा था तो उस समय और क्या दुर्दशा होगी आप सोच सकते हैं उसका आकलन किया गया बहुत सारी फिल्में भी बनी है है ना बहुत सारी चीजें आपने देखी हैं बहुत सारा शोध हुआ है इसके ऊपर लेकिन हुआ मैं ये मानता हूं कि कॉलोनिज्म वॉज नेवर ए फिलानथ्रॉपी इज नॉट ए फिलानथ्रॉपी वी फेल बिकॉज वी वेर कॉलोनाइज सोसाइटी कॉलोनाइज सोसाइटी में आपका शरीर भी कॉलोनाइज है उसको भी वो सरकार पकड़ती है आज भी सरकार पकड़ती है आज भी मेरे शरीर पे मेरा शरीर थोड़ा ही है हमारा तो वर्चस्व खत्म हो गया तो सरकार हम तो अगर वो पता नहीं कौन सा सेतु वेतु निकला है आप टोटल सर्वेलेंस में <laughs> तो ये तो हमारा शरीर है ही नहीं ये तो परिवार का शरीर है समाज का शरीर है और सबसे ऊपर हमारी उदारवादी सरकार का शरीर है तो जब आज ये हाल है तो आप सोच सकते हैं सौ साल पहले हमारे पूर्वजों के ऊपर क्या बीतती होगी उन्होंने सफर तो किया इसमें तो राय नहीं तो अंग्रेजी सरकार के पहले तो ये था इसीलिए उन्होंने सेग्रीगेशन करेंटाइन वायलेंस का इस्तेमाल बहुत कसम से किया क्योंकि उन्होंने साफ कहा कि भाई इसके लिए हमारे पास पैसा नहीं आप देखेंगे उस जमाने में भी हेल्थ पे क्या एक्सपेंडिचर है एजुकेशन तो छोड़ ही दीजिए तो अगर उनका आप पूरा देखेंगे तो जितना वो नीले गोरे कमा करके बाहर ले गए उसका शतांश भी नहीं खर्च करते थे उसके ऊपर तो प्लांटेशन इकोनॉमी था प्लांटेशन इकोनॉमी वाज बाउंड टू बी एक्सप्लोइटेटिव और ये जब आ, 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 इसका एक बड़े मजेदार उदाहरण मैंने पढ़ा कर्जन पेपर पढ़ रहा था तो उस जमाने में 1898 की जिसका जिक्र प्रोफेसर सावन ने किया उसी दौरान एक एक बड़ा शोध आया था अठारह के बाद ही एक शोध आया इसको कहते हैं सोलर स्पेक्ट्रो ग्राफी कई जगह पे आपने नेचर जर्नल का नाम सुना होगा बड़ा ही महत्वपूर्ण जर्नल है साइंस में आज भी नेचर नेचर में छापना बहुत बड़ी बात मानी जाती है नेचर जर्नल के संस्थापक थे नॉर्मन लॉकियर ये लॉकियर साहब यहाँ आए थे हिंदुस्तान और वो सोलर फिजिसिस्ट थे तो वो सोलर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी में काम करते थे उन्होंने देहरादून में और पूना में इन सभी जगहों में वो लगाया टेलीस्कोप और उससे यहाँ पे क्योंकि यहाँ पे सूर्य ग्रहण अभी हाल में कल सूर्य ग्रहण लगा था परसों तो सूर्य ग्रहण वगैरह यहाँ पे ज्यादा साफ दिखता है यूरोप के मुकाबले तो यहाँ पे उस पर रिसर्च हुआ उसमें ये पाया गया कि सूर्य के ऊपर जो सोलर फ्लेम होते हैं बहुत जबरदस्त जो निकलते हैं फूटते हैं लावा जो ज्वालामुखी फूटती है उसका असर उसका रिलेशन रेनफॉल से है मानसून से है और उसकी कई डेटा निकाली गई कई साल का मेट्रोलॉजिकल डिपार्टमेंट बना था ब्रिटिश पीरियड में 1860 में उन लोगों ने ये निकाला कि ये तो इस तरह अगर सोलर एक्टिविटी कम होती है तो ऐसी स्थिति आती है अगर ज्यादा होती है तो ऐसी स्थिति आती है तो इस तरह से लोगों ने एक कसम से ऐसा साइंटिफिक ये निकाला कि एपिडेमिक्स की एक बड़ी वजह और अकाल की भी एक बड़ी वजह जो है वो मानसून रेनफॉल है इन्वायरमेंट है और ये इन्वायरमेंट बहुत डिपेंडेंट है सूरज के ऊपर उसके सोलर फ्लेम के ऊपर तो कर्जन ने लिखा बड़ा मजेदार मुझे भी बहुत आश्चर्य लगा वॉज अ वेरी ब्राइट फेलो एंड बहुत आर्च इम्पीरियलिस्ट तो थे उन्होंने लिखा आई कोट इट वर्बेटिम ब्रिटानिया रूल्स द वेव्स नॉट द सोलर फ्लेम्स हम समुद्र की तरंगों पर राज करते हैं सोलर फ्लेम पे नहीं इसलिए अगर कुछ होता है लोग मरते हैं तो मरते रहे इसके लिए ब्रिटानिया जिम्मेवार नहीं आज भी हमारी सरकार जिम्मेवार नहीं 
आप दूसरों को ब्लेम देते रहते हो तो चीन से आ गया जी चीन से बाकी चीज आए तो बहुत अच्छा वायरस आए तो बहुत खराब है ना आपका जमीन भी ले ले तो भी अच्छा कोई बात नहीं तो ये ब्लेम गेम जो है उन्नीसवीं शताब्दी में भी चल रहा था महामारी की एक बड़ी खास कैरेक्टरिस्टिक है ब्लेम गेम सब एक दूसरे को ब्लेम करते रहते हैं फाइनली गॉड कम्स गॉड एक्सेप्ट ऑल द ब्लेम वहीं पे बात खत्म हो जाती है फिर फिर हमारा तो कोई रोल ही नहीं है मेरी सरकार का रोल नहीं है मेरा रोल नहीं किसी का नहीं सब भाग्य ये बातें आपको उन्नीसवीं शताब्दी में मिलेंगी ऐसा नहीं बहुत सारे नॉवेल्स में आप देखेंगे सबसे खूबसूरत वर्क तो इसमें आरोग्य निकेतन आप सबों ने पढ़ाई होगा सुना होगा उसमें कैसे हमारे वैद्य हमारी आम लोग कैसे किसी बीमारी से जूझने में क्या होता था कैसे करते थे बहुत अद्भुत उपन्यास है वह ऐसी चीजें और भी जगह लिखी गई खासतौर से हिंदी में मुझे जहां तक थोड़ा बहुत ज्ञान है पटना में खड़ग विलास प्रेस था उसने कई पैम्फलेट निकाले महामारी के एक मैकू लाल थे लखनऊ में वो कुर्मी सभा उन्होंने बनाई थी उनका ख्याल था कि ये पछिया हवा आने से होता है तो सबों ने अधिकतर लोगों ने इन्वायरमेंटल डिटर्मिनिज्म की बात की जर्म्स की बात नहीं हुई अनफॉर्चुनेटली हमारे यहाँ या तो रिलीजन की बात हुई या एनवायरमेंट की बात हुई इसको ऐसे ही जोड़ा गया यहां गलती हुई हमसे यहां गलती हुई खैर इसके बाद में क्विकली अब मैं पांच या सात मिनट और वक्त लूंगा उससे ज्यादा नहीं मेरे पास तो दो तीन बातें दो बातें और ऐड करना चाहता हूं कि आखिर इसके इलाज में हम लोगों ने क्या सोचा वैक्सीन की बात की गई और वैक्सीन के खिलाफ प्रोटेस्ट भी हुआ लेकिन जो जिस इंसान ने कलकत्ता में पहला वैक्सीन का एक्सपेरिमेंट किया वो था हैफकिन वाल्दमर मोरदाई हैफकिन यह एटीन में कलकत्ता पहुंचे और वो इसलिए पहुंचे वो लुई पाशर के स्टूडेंट थे पहले वो रशियन जायोन ये थे नरोदनिक थे और उनको रशिया की सरकार ने जार ने निकाल दिया था वो रशियन यहूदी थे वो डेसा के रहने वाले थे पेरिस में भाग करके उन्होंने वहाँ पे बैक्टेरियोलॉजी का अध्ययन किया वो ज्वालजिस्ट थे और उनको अपना जब वैक्सीन डेवलप किया तो उसको बढ़ाने के लिए उसका उसको एक्सपेरिमेंट करने के ह्यूमन एक्सपेरिमेंट के लिए उनको जगह चाहिए थी तो कॉलोनी से बढ़िया क्या होगा आज भी ह्यूमन एक्सपेरिमेंट के लिए बिना आपको बताए हुए भी हो रहा है उसी तरह से ह्यूमन एक्सपेरिमेंट के लिए हेफकिन यहाँ आए यहाँ के जेलों में उन्होंने काम किया जिसमें पहली दफा कंट्रोल्ड फील्ड ट्रायल किए गए जिसमें कुछ लोगों को वैक्सीन दिया गया कुछ लोगों को नहीं दिया गया और इस तरह से डेटा जनरेट किया ही इज द फादर ऑफ मेडिकल स्टेटिस्टिक्स इन इंडिया हेफकिन और 92 से लेकर के 1904 तक जब तक उनको निकाला नहीं गया था एक अनफॉर्चुनेट इंसिडेंट में उन्होंने कॉलरा और प्लेग दोनों के खिलाफ वैक्सीन बनाए आज उनके नाम पे हैप्टी इंस्टीट्यूट है लोअर परेल बॉम्बे में और वो ट्रेन में पांच छह घोड़े के साथ चलते थे घोड़े के के खून को पहले दूषित किया जाता था विद जम और फिर उसको बीमार करके उसका सीरम बनाया जाता था तरह तरह के ब्रॉथ बनते थे मैंने एक पर्चा भी लिखा है के ऊपर बहुत पहले 25 साल पहले जिसमें उसके गहराई से उसकी बात की गई लेकिन हेफकिन हिंदुस्तान में रहते हुए भी वो कहता था अगर आप उसके पर्सनल डायरी और राइटिंग में देखें वो कहता था ये गलत कह रहे हैं कि हिंदुस्तानी रिवोल्ट कर रहे हैं हिंदुस्तानी को जब पता चल जाता है कि इस जाहिल से जाहिल गरीब से गरीब इंसान को पता चल जाता है कि इस वैक्सीन से उनको फायदा होने वाला है तो वो वैक्सीन के लिए जान मांग, मांगते थे जेल में तो बहुत लोग रोते थे कि सर डॉक्टर साहब आप मुझे वैक्सीन दे दीजिए पहले जिनको नहीं दिया जाता था क्योंकि वो जानते थे कि वो मर जाएंगे अगर उनको दवा नहीं मिली टीका नहीं मिली इसलिए ये कहना कि भारतीय टीका विरोधी रहा है या कोई गरीब से गरीब आदमी अनपढ़ आदमी ये नहीं समझ रहा है यह गलत होगा वो कई जगह लिखते हैं कि ब्रिटिश सरकार नहीं चाहती है देना क्योंकि उनको खर्चा आएगा वैक्सीन इतना लगाने में आज भी देख रहे हैं ना कि टेस्टिंग सरकार के पास पैसा ही नहीं कहां से टेस्टिंग करेंगे लोग टेस्ट कराने से थोड़ी भाग रहे हैं टेस्टिंग का क्या सामान ही नहीं है आपके पास 
अस्पताल अटे पड़े हैं भरे पड़े हैं चाह के भी लोग अस्पताल का चक्कर काट काट करके वापस जा रहे हैं मर रहे हैं सड़क पे दस दस अस्पताल उनको रिफ्यूज कर देता है तो सच्चाई ये है कि कभी भी आप आम आदमी को ब्लेम ना करें इस महामारी से एक चीज और सीखने की बात है कि आम आदमी को ब्लेम करना बड़ा आसान है वो तो गरीब है मुलाजिम है उसका क्या है लेकिन ये उस समय भी हुआ आज भी हो रहा है ये हमें जरूर जानना चाहिए कि ये गलत तरीका है इसके खिलाफ नहीं कहा कानून इंडियन अंडरस्टैंड एंड इट इज ट्रू फॉर इंडियन इकोनॉमी इन एग्रीकल्चर ऑल्सो ये कहना गलत होगा कि आप उसको सीट दीजिएगा वो समझता नहीं कि सीट से फायदा है कि नहीं तो लगाएगा वो जाहिल होने से क्या होता है उसको सॉइल केमिस्ट्री पता है उसको पता है कब कौन सा मानसून कब कौन सा रेन आएगा कब कौन सा नक्षत्र में कौन सा बीज बोना है और कौन सा पानी आएगा इसी तरह वो अपने शरीर को भी पहचानता है लेकिन चलिए हम आसान काम होता है किसी मुलाजिम को गरीब को ब्लेम कर देना तो हम करते रहे वो अंग्रेज भी करते थे हम आज भी करते बहुत फर्क नहीं है दोनों दोनों उतने वायलेंट है दोनों बॉडी कंट्रोल करते हैं दोनों उतना ही वायलेंट है तो ये चीज जो है सो ध्यान में रखने का ये भी आप हम इतिहास से सीख सकते हैं कि कैसे इस वायलेंस को थोड़ा कम किया जा सके कैसे वी कैन मेक मेडिसिन मोर ह्यूमेन रोनल्ड रॉस मलेरिया आप जान रहे हैं वही कलकत्ता में थे हैदराबाद में थे और उन दोनों जगहों में उन्होंने यही खाली मॉस्किटोज पे काम किया बहुत डिफिकल्टी के साथ किया अगर आप रोनल रॉस के प्राइवेट पेपर्स देखें उनके मेमोर पढ़े ये तो आपको पता चलेगा कि अंग्रेजी सरकार अंग्रेज होते हुए भी उनको डिस्करेज करती थी और हिंदुस्तानियों की तो बात ही छोड़ दिए लेकिन ही केम टू ए पर्टिकुलर कंक्लूजन आफ्टर सो मेनी ट्रायल एंड एरर मेथड दैट ए पर्टिकुलर काइंड ऑफ मॉस्किटो आउट ऑफ हंड्रेड ऑफ डिफरेंट अदर काइंड ओनली वन फीमेल ये कैरीज द प्लाज्मोडियम दिस वॉज इट यूनिक एब्सोल्युटली यूनिक यू कैन इमेजिन ये ऐसा था जैसे भूस के ढेरे ढेर से आप एक छोटी सा नीडल निकाल रहे हैं उन्होंने निकाल दिया उसके लिए उनको नोबेल प्राइज मिला उन्नीस सौ दो में और वो वो तो खैर छोड़िए नोबेल वोबल उनको हम तो हिंदुस्तानी गिनेंगे नहीं उनको हालांकि उनका सारा काम हिंदुस्तान में हुआ उनको हम कुछ नहीं मांगते लेकिन उसके बाद भी उन्होंने यही कहा कि देखिए इसका इलाज वैक्सीन नहीं है इसका इलाज है सैनिटेशन हर वक्त सैनिटेशन की बात की सफाई की बात की ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट ने कहा मेरे पास इतना थोड़ी पैसा कि हम यहां सफाई करते फिर आज हमारी सरकार के भी पास नहीं कौन करेगा रॉस को हमने भुला दिया आज भी मलेरिया का वैक्सीन नहीं आई होप टू साउंड टू करेक्ट मी मलेरिया का वैक्सीन तो नहीं करा और आज भी मलेरिया से ज्यादा लोग मरते हैं ये वायरस वूरस कुछ नहीं उसके साथ बहुत ज्यादा लोग मरते हैं 2500 लाख मरते हैं मलेरिया से और इस पे काम आज से 100 साल से ऊपर पहले हो चुका है सौ बीस साल पहले रॉस पता भी दिया इटियोलॉजी पता है वाई पता है लेकिन हाउ टू हैंडल इट वो भी उसने बताया प्रॉप सैनिटेशन दैट्स द ओनली वे यू कैंट किल मोस्किटो यू कैंट किल ऑल द जर्म्स यू हैव टू लिव विथ इट यू कैंट किल ऑल द वायरस यू हैव टू लिव विथ इट एंड हाउ यू हैंडल इट That's the most important. This is the lesson we draw from history. I'm grateful to all of you. बहुत बहुत आपको धन्यवाद कि आपने मौका दिया. I hope कि शायद मेरी हिंदी चल पर कुछ काम काबिल होगी. और मैं आगे भी लिखने की भी कोशिश करता हूँ. इस पे कुछ लेकिन वक्त लगेगा. तो आपसे मुखातिब होने के लिए बहुत 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 शुक्रिया. बहुत धन्यवाद. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And आपका हिंदी बहुत ही काम आएगा. हमारे ज़्यादातर students जो हैं. वो हिंदी ही बोलते हैं हिंदी समझ में आता है उनका तो थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू फॉर योर एंगेजिंग एंड इनरीचिंग लेक्चर्स एंड इट्स प्रूफ दैट नंबर ऑफ बंच ऑफ क्वेश्चंस हैव लाइंड अप हियर सो योर लेक्चर्स हैव ट्रिगर्ड ऑफ अ नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चंस एंड वी वोंट बी एबल टू डील विद देम ऑल बट मे बी वील टेक अप अ फ्यू वील स्टार्ट विथ प्रोफेसर शामोंतो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज एड्रेस्ड टू यू दैट इज कुड यू प्लीज टॉक अ लिटिल बिट ऑन द रोल प्लेड बाय रामकृष्ण मिशन in serving the plague patients in kolkata also something about vivekananda's plague manifesto which is so much in news these days on social media the question is from saurav kumar rai so do you want to proceed with this question first so eta diye ekhon eto lekha hoyesh ami notun kore ar ki rokom bolbo shudhu ei tukui amar bolar je ramkrishna mishra tarof theke vivekananda was very much concerned about plague 
এবং হি ওয়েন্ট টু সাচ এন এক্সট্রিম যে তার মনে হয়েছিল তার যারা গুরু ভাই তারা বলেছিলেন যে মঠ এবং মিশন মঠ তখন প্রতিষ্ঠা হয়নি মিশনের এমন আমি মঠ প্রতিষ্ঠা হয়েছে মিশন প্রতিষ্ঠা হয়নি এমন কিছু আর্থিক সংস্থান ছিল না যে এরকম একটা বড় সেবামূলক কাজ প্লে গ্রুপের সেবা করা বা তাদেরকে আলাদা করে রাখতে যে যা যা তখনকার প্র্যাকটিস হয়ে সেগুলো করা সম্ভব হবে একসময় যিনি বিরক্ত হয়ে বলেছিলেন যে মঠে তোমরা হয়তো জানো যে মঠের জন্য যে জমি কেনা হয়েছিল বেলুড় এখন যেখানে নাম পুরো মঠ মিশন সেটা বেশিরভাগই বিদেশিদের টাকায় লেগের টাকা দিয়েছিলেন গায়ের টাকা দিয়েছিলেন অনেকের টাকা দিয়েছিলেন এবং সে তার জন্য সে টাকা সঞ্চিত ছিল যে এরপরে জমিটা কেনা হবে আর অনেক বড় করা হবে তিনি এমন ভাবে ভেবেছিলেন যে প্লেগ এখন আমাদের কাছে খুবই একটা ইমার্জেন্ট ইস্যু এটাকে অ্যাড্রেস করা দরকার এখন মঠ প্রতিষ্ঠা থেকে এটা অ্যাড্রেস করা দরকার সুতরাং দরকার হলে মঠের টাকা আমি প্লেগ নিবারণের জন্য বা প্লেগ রোগীদের সেবা করার জন্য আমি লাগিয়ে দেব এটা সত্যি একজন সন্ন্যাসী হয়ে তিনি সরকারের থেকেও আরো বেশি বড় স্বপ্ন ছিল যে তার গুরুর নামে একটি সংস্থা তৈরি করা সমস্ত গুরু ভাইদের এক জায়গা জড়ো করা এবং তাদের আবাস তৈরি করা সেই সুযোগটাও তার হয়েছিল টাকাটাও সংস্থান হয়েছিল কিন্তু তিনি একসময় তার বিরক্ত হয়ে বলেছিলেন গুরু ভাইদের যে আমি দরকার হলে মঠ বিক্রি করে দেবো এবং সেই টাকায় আমি প্লেগদের সেবা করব বাকি নতুন কথা সত্যি কথা বলতে কি রামকৃষ্ণ মিশন এবং প্লেগদের সেবা সেটা আমার নতুন কিছু আমরা সবাই জানি এই গত তিন দু তিন মাস ধরে আনন্দ বাজার বা প্রতিদিন বা বর্তমান অজস্র লেখা এই নিয়ে হয়েছে আমার মনে হয় এটাই নতুন কিছু বিবেকানন্দেরি মাস so he was so much uh, concerned about the uh, plague victim and uh, for the amelioration of the condition of the plague uh, that he was ready to uh, sell out the property that was purchased that was donated by uh, his european uh, disciples he went to that extent that i will sell out the property to, uh, and earn the money to you know the heal the uh, person infected by the plague so to the, this will be my uh, rather uh, intervention and, and what there are so many writings coming up in, in bengali newspaper or english newspaper even in telegraph there are so many <coughs> uh, articles and papers about the role of ramakrishna mission during the plague of 1902 in calcutta so this much i can add thank you professor shamut so next question is from uh, rakesh de and uh, his question is uh, is it more difficult for the demo, for a democratic government to check this kind of disease check this spread of uh, you know this kind of disease rather than a non democratic government so that's that's uh, the question from rakesh uh well i have recently read a book by uh, frank snowden the history of epidemic from past to the present it was published just before the uh, advent of this corona virus now he seems to argue that uh, you know uh, instead of uh, you know naming government as democratic or uh, rather uh, capitalist or any uh, socialist or any other way we should be addressing government as pro people or anti people the government which are pro people they may address the question of social well being uh, they may address the question of uh, public health so i think the uh, question who has put it to me might be having in his back to mind the question of the communist regime or the leftist government as it was done by the kerala government kerala government has done extremely well uh, cuba it has done extremely well so we are rather uh, you know assuming that the democratic uh, socialist government are more competent to address problem like this and uh, and other government was not up to the mark of addressing the question so adroitly 
So my uh, rather intervention will be like this. Uh, well, of course, uh, you know, enforcement of certain uh, restriction must uh, come from a strict government. Maybe it's democratic or autocratic or theocratic, whatever you call it. Uh, there are certain measures which have to be enforced strictly to uh, contain a disease, to contain uh, the spread of the disease as such. So if a government can enforce those uh, you know, measures effectively, then the disease can be addressed in a better way. Uh, the problem is that that might be protest. If it goes against our uh, notion of health, if it goes against our, you know, the uh, enjoyment of religious practices, and that will raise, you know, a huge amount of protest from the people. If it is democratic government, uh, the people might have that sort of, uh, you know, right to protest against any measure that seems to be uh, going against uh, the uh, people, as people. Uh, are very much active. So I don't think the government can, in that way, uh, you know, uh, what do you say? Uh, it might be democratic or it might be uh, rather uh, socialist or it might be communist, whatever it might be. It must have the power or the mentality or the temperament to enforce measures which are suitable to address a disease. That, is, that will be my final answer. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'd, I'd be a little bit selfish now. It's a rare opportunity to have you and Professor Kumar both in the same frame. So I'm, I'm going to ask a question uh, of my own. Uh, so how do you, how do you place uh, the role of humor in post-colonial context? And this question is in a way related to uh, Professor Deepak Kumar's reference to body politics also. So my question to Professor Shamant would be, and how do you place this you know, uh, impact of humor in post-colonial context? And then I would like to ask Professor Kumar how to place the same question in terms of body politics in post-colonial context. Professor yeah, Shamantu, uh, You know, even nowadays uh, in the, I mean, uh, Corona-19, COVID-19 days, we're listening to huge amount of rumors uh, which are uh, afloat still now, that uh, our prime minister is destined to, uh, you know, address this uh, COVID-19. Uh, is born to, uh, you know, uh, remedy the situation. This sort of rumor is very much rife and everywhere. So the role of rumor right from the uh, beginning of the human civilization, I, I mean, reminded of the rumor that was a uh, in Greek history when uh, plague was ravaging Athens. Right from then uh, up to this 21st century, rumors have always a role to play. They are, uh, you know, our, uh, we are rather living with these rumors. When we can't explain anything, we cannot address it scientifically, uh, then we float rumor. So, yes, with COVID-19, there are so many rumors. This rumor, I don't know whether this has any material base or not, that it has uh, prepared by, in laboratory by China. Uh, I, I was just reading a few days back that Actually, it, it, it didn't originate from China. It originated from uh, Northern Italy, where the Chinese migrant workers were working uh, in a textile factory. There it was uh, invented. There it was uh, rather uh, invented, yes. So we don't know exactly where it was invented. Say, for instance, the Spanish flu. It didn't originate in Spain. You know, during the First World War, there was press censorship. It, in fact, did originate most probably uh, in Germany or in France, uh, either of the two. But it goes by the name of Spanish flu because the Spanish government, uh, since it was not a party to the First World War, there was no as press censorship as such. So they admitted that they have, their soldiers are having uh, this sort of uh, influenza fever. So it goes by the name of the Spanish flu. So these are misnomer, you know. People used to say Asiatic cholera. This was another sort of quote unquote rumor. Uh, propagated by the Western people. Uh, cholera didn't originate in, uh, you know, uh, the, the tropics or in Asia, but it goes by the name of Asiatic cholera. And uh, say, uh, for instance, tropic. Tropic is supposed to be the uh, uh, original region of uh, disease causation. So it has this bad name. 
since India belongs to this tropical area, India was supposed to be a disease laboratory of uh, disease laboratory. So these sort of uh, rumors or these sort of you know uh, th these are taken for granted that uh, this will happen at the end. So uh, so my my uh, submission will be like this. So when we can't explain anything scientifically, we float rumor, and that goes on and on. Even with uh, COVID-19, the same thing is happening everywhere. Not only in India, also uh, there are also uh, other places in the world where rumors are there, and uh, people tend to believe it. That's uh, most interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shamantu. Now, taking a cue from this, uh, from his, uh, you know, dialogue, I would like to, uh, you know, uh, extend it to uh, extend the question to Professor Kumar. Thank you for, uh, you know, for your engaging lecture. So, you know, not only the spread of rumor, but also the celebration around the rumor and so in a way that we almost, uh, you know, make it true. So how, how do you see uh, this uh, role of the rumor, celebration of rumor uh, around, uh, you know, the discourse of body politics, especially in post-colonial context? That would be my question to you. Thank you. Things have changed a great deal because of the changes in means of communication. Uh, earlier, we didn't have social media, so even rumor had to take a lot of time to travel. Now it is so fast. And uh, another thing which I would like to point out in relation to rumor is the amount of scare. You know, I doubt whether scare, the way we witness today in 21st century, was there in late 19th century. People would get, you know, would, didn't have the time to feel scared. They would die. It will come so fast. Villages ravaged quick. Today, it's, you know, you have more of a scare. Go to any condominium, urban area. They're all scared. Whether the disease is there or not itself is being debated to what extent it is, but it's still, it's the scare. All the gates have been closed. The economy locked down. The word lockdown is a very, very heavy word. There was no lockdown in 19th century India. There was segregation, there, were, there was some violence, there was a force, certain sections of the society punished. But it, this time, it's the whole nation is being punished. The entire million and billion population are punished. So scare is the word I would like to add to your terminology of Ryuma. To what extent it is valid or not is still debatable. People say flu had always been with us. Now the scare is that it affects 70 plus people more. So I am supposed to I have become untouchable in my own family. They don't allow me to go out. I love, what is this? This is another kind of chut, a chua chut. Somebody gets a, even asymptomatic, even by the time negative report comes, he's being, uh, you know, looked upon with great suspicion, which is a shame. We are not lepers. Even if I had been a leper, I don't deserve this. All kind, there is a lot of scare. We, I'm not opposed to taking sanitation measures, as Ross himself had. I referred to Ross. I'm not opposed to mask. I'm not opposed to so-called social distancing, which is not possible in a dense population like ours. In Paras, what kind of social distancing you will make? In condos and big, uh, those flats, you can manage something. You can stop people. But look at the dense paras and slums. How can you stop this? And they are also humans. We have to find another way. Cleanliness. Oh, everybody is for it. Who doesn't want structure violence? Everybody is. But this is what Ross also advocated a century ago. We didn't hear to listen to it. Today, the you know work, the medical amelioration should be accompanied by confidence, not scare. It should be accompanied by knowledge, not scare. And knowledge is available. 
if rumor can spread, why can't knowledge spread? The same method, the same communication means. So we need to be careful about it. We need to have more empathy. We can't have, and as you ask this question, democratic or non-democratic form of government, even democratic forms of government, you will have the doubt how democratic they are. If they announce it within four hour lockout, then you know, there is no discussion. You know, you can't spring surprises overnight in few hours. See, this is, this is this martial law. This kind of democracy is worse than totalitarianism. You have to take people into account. You have to discuss, you have to give one day, two day, three day, four day. South Africa gave three months, two months. We knew it right from November. COVID-19 is coming. January, I was aware of it, an ordinary citizen. I knew what was happening in January. February, people came to know of this. But in February, my government was organizing huge, huge extravaganjas in Ahmedabad. Why this? We could have done it in February itself. We could have stopped international flights. We could have stopped its spread. We didn't. Italians didn't do that. That's their business. Many other countries, they didn't do it. What goes on elsewhere is, and they say, okay, fine. We are united in the fight. But you know, <coughs> in a democratic government, <coughs> which USA, India, Europe, etc., they believe they are, then there has to be discussion. There has to be transparency. I mean, disease is not an economic offense that you demonetize suddenly to unearth black money. Virus is not black money. So there has to be, you know, transparency. There has to be proper discussion, quick decision, of course. Take hard decisions. I'm not opposed to hard decisions. I'm not opposed to quarantine. I'm not opposed to, you know, the method, the measures you, but you must inform people, give them few hours, few days to prepare. This, the, the result was if you didn't give, people came out on road. Or some newspaper may aane lage, dhajiyan ud gai ji, social distance. Dhajiyan toh aapne bankai nahi diya, toh dhajiyan ud aaye. Intazam kiya nahi pahle sa aapne kuchko khana toh denge. Middle class who are paid, I am getting pension every month, so I am happy. People who are getting 10 rupees uh, uh, or uh, 50 rupees outside, what will happen to them? All the small scale industries, they stopped it. I talked to many people, the laborer who come, they say, sir, three months I'm a salary, kuch nahi mila. They stopped. You won't pay your maid while you are comfortable in your flat because they didn't come to work at your place. This is not done. This will all exasperate. And the fear and all kinds of things, this is absolutely inhuman. We have to deal with a Mahamari. This is what my point, last point is. One must deal with Mahamari with empathy. Mahamari is not war. Mahamari is not that you go for all out attack like this. Mahamari calls for empathy. Mahamari calls for understanding, for transparency. Yeah, everybody is hiding data. Data to sub is spurious. Itna fake news aagaya, social media ka kuch pata hi nahi chalta. Kuch samaj mein nahi aata who is true. We, and people tell me that we live in post-truth society. Ab kya bole hum? If everything is post-truth, Deepak Kumar himself is post-truth. It's better to be dead than, than deal with all this nonsense. <laughs> next. Okay. So the next question is from uh, Rajo Shidash. Uh, uh, so he's saying, may I request you to elaborate more on the blame game part, the creation of the other in the context of control of <coughs> pandemic. Look, blame game is a natural phenomenon. Humans have a tendency to blame because we are weak. I accept it. Epistemologically, we have been blaming government for everything. Government, government, God for everything. We have been blaming Bhagya for everything. So blame thoda bhoot to chalega. Lekin, 
if highly educated people, if the Raja himself starts blaming others, who take me? Who Raj Dharm Nahi Hoga? The Raj Dharm to Wahi hai ki jo ruler hai, jo ruling class hai, jo hamare bade administrators hai, hamari jo hamari ji, jo hamari rakhwali kar rahe hai, jinko humne vote diya, jinpe humne trust kiya, jinko, jinke upar hum samarpit hai, hum dilo jaan se samarpit. खाली नहीं कि मैं टैक्स देता हूं दिल से मैं उनको पसंद करता हूं चाहता हूं कि आज आप अच्छा करें तो उनको तो ब्लेम नहीं देना चाहिए कि वो मैं मुझे ही ब्लेम करें वो ये ना करें ब्लेम गेम हैज इट्स ओन लिमिटेशंस एंड ब्लेम गेम डजंट लीड यू एनीवेयर डजंट लीड यू एनीवेयर एज आई सेड द ब्रिटिश डिडंट कम हियर फॉर फिलंथ्रोपी का को ब्लेम देने का कर्जन तो ठीक ही बोला ब्रिटेनिया रन्स ऑन Rules the waves, not the solar flames. Of course, he was right. He ruled the waves, and he controlled us through the waves. He came via the waves, not via solar flame. So, इसीलिए वो 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 चक्कर ये बराबर अभी भी हमें ध्यान में रखना चाहिए that that this blame game will not lead us anywhere. Let us solve all together. There should be consensus, and this has to come from the head of the family. From the topmost whom we have elected to all the others, there has to what you call we are a federal government, so federal cooperation. We require federal corporate cooperation in its most democratic way, and it requires finance, lots of money. That money has to be generated, that money has to be diverted. Whatever you do, because this is a very crisis situation. Health is a crisis situation. <clears throat> So blame, I would say that uh, we should try to desist from it. I will not blame any. Okay? The crisis is on us and let us face it squarely. Let us go by the prevalent medical knowledge. I would trust my epidemiologists. I would trust my people and what they say. They also get scared. Unfortunately, our epidemiologists and our ICMR, our council, etc. They also want to placate more the political masters than do the real science. I, science has to be honest. Science has to be open. Science has to be forthright. Has to call a spade and a spade. It has to be transparent. So let medical science speak. Give us the right thing. And our political leaders should listen to them. Expert advice and act accordingly. There may be errors, but those errors, you know, we shouldn't, without listening to them, without doing only for personal gratification and you, you put the whole country in and the economy and the society in jeopardy is no good. Now the inequality will grow. Thanks to this COVID-19, inequality is going to grow like anything. There will be new kind of chua chut, new kind of uh, aspreshata. Untouchability comes. All this needs to be, you know, avoided, looked into, and avoided. And it is possible. I think I would go only only for the democratic form of government. Democracy, it is possible. It is possible. Yes. Next. Thanks again. Uh, our next question is from Nisha Thakur, and uh, she has pointed out that. Uh, uh, I'm quoting her. You have rightly mentioned that during the pre-modern times, India had not faced epidemics like the Black Death, etc. Presently, we are seeing that not more than 10% of Indians have access to proper medical facilities. So, uh, do you think there is a link between this present gap of poor, within bracket, mostly ignored in the popular news and writings, bracket close, and rich and the non-representation of majority of people in the literature of the past? I think uh, she has a point. Yes, it could it should could be possible that you know, even if we are talking of the current virus as a very virulent and and the peak is yet to come in November, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I still believe that we would survive the crisis. Our poorest would survive the crisis. We survived it earlier also, many times, many many times, different other kinds of bi my microbes, etc. 
<clears throat> but we will. Well, in my own life, I had not seen a feminine. I am a post 42 person. So very lucky, born in independent India. I haven't seen a feminine. I haven't seen Durbuk of that kind, except 1966, 67. Uh, you know, there was some problem and we were reared on PL480. You know, the wheat came from America, very rotten wheat, PL480. I call myself PL480 generation. <coughs> no, Russian rationing and all that. Uh, I had suffered a smallpox. I have myself undergone smallpox. And uh, my family, many people, we used to have this vaccination here. <coughs> I don't know, we, BCG was never given. Child mortality was high. I lost my elder brother to uh, this typhoid when he was only three year old, 1950, because child mortality was high. <clears throat> but later, it, we recovered. Later, the whole country, now the child mortality is uh, pretty low. And this explains, you know, independent India did well. Independent India did well. Last 40, 50 years, despite all these criticisms that you hear today, I mean, things have improved in, in many areas of our activity, of our life. The very fact that in 1947-48, the average age of an Indian was only 29 or 28. Today, I am alive at 70. is quite a tribute to Nehruvian India and the foundation that I am alive. What else? What other more proof? So, so I think we will survive this crisis. I'm not scared at all. We will survive the crisis. And with minimum deaths, minimum deaths, it is possible. I don't believe lots of what immunity bullshit comes out, but we will survive on our own. Thank you. So uh, we still have a bunch of questions lined up. Should we continue or should we? No, no, today? please, please, please. Well, I'm a free bird. You ask Professor Samanto. I have no problem. Yeah, actually, there is a question I've just stumbled upon for uh, Professor Samanto. Mm. And sorry, I'm experiencing technical glitch on uh, from my part of the world. You know, digital India, and this is rural part of India. So I'm really sorry uh, for this technical glitch. Mm. And so this question is from Mohan Haldar. And the question mm. is to Professor Samanto. So uh, what he asked is, I mean, we have we know about the impact, the deep impact of uh, plague on Calcutta. But what about the areas in northern Bengal? Do you have any information about that? Uh, the question is to Professor Shamanto. Yeah, 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 I understand. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes. <coughs> I don't have much idea about it. Uh, proliferation of plague in northern in northern India, northern Bengal. Northern Bengal. Northern Bengal. Northern Bengal. Northern Bengal. Bengal. I don't think there was much, uh, you know, uh, spread of uh, plague in northern Bengal. It 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 it, it rather doing some sort of mischief with the Calcutta people, and some part of Bihar, you know, uh, particularly Munger and Bhagalpur. Uh, Early, early, early 20th century, that is uh, 1899 to 1902. There was some mortality over there. You know, there are some references of this mortality in Bihar, in uh, particularly in Bagalpur, in Srikanto. If you read the novel of Srikanto, Srikanto was infected with plague and he was rescued by Raj Lokhi uh, from Bagalpur. So, and, 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 and you know, there are some report, government reports pertaining to the uh, mortality of plague in Bihar. Uh, Munger, Patna, part of Patna, and, uh, and Calcutta. The village was not that much affected in, in, in India. And so I don't have much idea about its uh, spread uh, far north of Bengal. I don't think, uh, there are no reports as such. Uh, Okay, the next question is also to you. That's from uh, Shunayana. I'm just shortening her question. Uh, so uh, the gist of her question is, you know, scientists are working on vac vaccines for COVID-19. And whenever they would come out, they're going to be very expensive. But her question is, I mean, uh, you know, in this context, what should be the role of the government in minimalizing the cost of it? And do we find any gestures from the colonial government in history in making vaccines available to all strata of the population? 
<laughs> very common question so to say uh, yeah the, what a government can, can subsidize it if it is it becomes costly it can reach poorer people of the society and but in fact this is not that much uh, costly nowadays it is uh, 3500 the one flabby uh, you know flabby flu which is supposed to be uh, having some sort of purity value of uh, a mild or to a minor attack of flu uh, I think this could be. So government can intervene and they may, uh, it may subsidize and give it to people uh, and make it less costly. That will be, uh, it's, be, it's an easy guess. Any government can do that. So, you know. Uh, but there's uh, another there addendum are, to the question. Sorry, are, sorry, sorry to interrupt there you. Are, there is an addendum. Pardon? Uh, sorry, there is this addendum to the to her question that is, uh, do you find any gestures from the colonial government history in making vaccines available to all strata of the population? Colonial government? I mean, we are talking about uh, the colonial period. Or... I mean, yeah, she uh, you know, uh, connected it to the colonial uh, you know, scenario or presented a question to the colonial scenario. And uh, the second part of her question was, I mean, uh, do we find any gestures from the colonial government in making vaccines available to all strata of the population. That was the second part. Oh, but during the colonial period, vaccines were made available to the common people. That was the question. Was it made oh, all available to the people, common yeah. people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as Professor, uh, you know, the uh, largest mortality in colonial period was due to the malaria. You know, even before the advent of COVID-19, uh, the largest uh, population infected by uh, malaria and the largest you know the mortality used to be from uh, malaria uh, before the advent of uh, COVID-19. During colonial India also you know uh, malaria mortality was the highest in fact compared to other diseases say uh, plague or uh, cholera or smallpox but malaria was not that dreaded. As Professor Deepak Kumar was saying there is no vaccine to uh, you know, uh, malaria. So we have learned to live with it. We have learned to be, we are used to it. We have taken precaution. We can't uh, destroy all mosquitoes as such. So as, a, as long as mosquitoes are there, so the malaria will be there. There are medicines, medicines have been invented, in but there is no vaccine as such. And uh, there were, you know, during the colonial period, very few vaccines were, uh, you know, uh, was discovered. Uh, Hacking Institute tried to work on plague. There was serum therapy. But the thing is that people were not even, I, I, I beg to differ a little bit from Deepak Kumar's position. In colonial pe period, uh, you know, the people didn't accept all these uh, experimentation of uh, medicine very so easily. Take the case of vaccine instead of, uh, I mean, smallpox vaccine. The Tikhadar used to uh, inoculate uh, people, but when Western vaccination was introduced, it was very mainly opposed to, due to various reasons, because, uh, firstly, because of religion. The Faraji Muslims, they didn't accept it. They believed that it was a ploy by the British. You know, there was a rumor floated during uh, smallpox that uh, the Muslim will be liberated again from the British by an, by a, by a, by an imam. And how that Iman will be uh, known? Now, instead of uh, normal red blood in our vein, the Iman is supposed to carry white blood. So the, uh, the British has invented this vaccination in order to detect the people, detect the particular man who is having in his vein this white blood. So by vaccination, they are trying to detect that person. So it was a ploy of the British government to detect Imam and to imprison him and uh, to uh, uh, nip in the bird any sort of uh, protest movement by the uh, Muslim community. So the Faraji people, they didn't accept vaccination. They are vehemently opposing this uh, uh, practice of vaccination. In Bengal, as such, uh, in, in Bengal proper, uh, vaccination means it will take away one day's uh, you know, income. They have to take all the old people, the uh, you know, the infants at, at terms to the vaccination center and get them vaccinated. And there, uh, it was not free of cost. Uh, it, 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 it was related to the age. If a child is vaccinated, there is a certain uh, you know rate. 
if an old person is vaccinated the rate differs if an adult is vaccinated the rate still differs even woman if a woman is vaccinated the rate is still different so not that uh, it was given free of cost the people had to incur some sort of uh, you know expense uh, for vaccination so they were happy with the tikka there because uh, it was the practice of tikka was associated with religion the tikka there will administer the tikka and enjoy certain religious duty to be performed for the next 15 days body shitala should be worship no so this science plus you know when science is associated with some sort of religious practices that was more acceptable to the bengalis instead of uh, simply administering administering a scientific device so you know whatever the colonial government tried to do might it, it might be true that they were having some uh, you know curative value or they have some remedial uh, properties in those measures people are not so very happy to accept it at the first instance they waited and uh, first the you know the literary or the educated people the intelligentsia they started propagating in favor of administration of those medicines in place and uh, in the public meeting and after huge amount of persuasion only the uh, i mean the mass of the people they started accepting those vaccinations or any sort of medicine that was introduced in colonial period yeah. thank you professor shamanto i think we can take up one more question and that's for professor kumar and uh, the question is from uh, prashant kumar pal his question is uh, so when did this process of institutionalization of public health start in indian subcontinent and was there any trend of institutionalization of public health in pre colonial india a very interesting question <clears throat> you know in pre colonial india public health was highly decentralized every village had a vaidya or a panch who were responsible for the sanitation part or to look after the welfare of the people of course it had its own dynamics and problems of chut achut marginal people well off people well off people were always better off it is true even today so pre colonial india organized it in a decentralized fashion but colonization was centralization of power that you must be even mogal india was not that powerful as the governor general in calcutta was calcutta emerges as an imperial city par excellence it may not have a taj mahal but it was more powerful it wielded more power than agra or delhi Lahore. It may not have the money. It still doesn't have the money, but it has other kinds of capital. So, so uh, before the British, you have certain kind of decentralization. However, effective or ineffective it was can be debated, can be discussed for long. But colonial India, centralization comes. and then you have new institutions coming up like calcutta medical college grant medical college later you have in 1870s you have bacteriological laboratories in pune in mukteswar in kunu four five places later in early 20th century you have kings institute in madras and thereby you know to and finally in 1920s you have uh, all in the institute of public health in kolkata is school of tropical medicine in kolkata <clears throat> so institutionalization takes place gradually you know from 1835 to 1920 you see this the development <clears throat> and they I, i i i think they played a significant role there is no doubt about it that they played it. if you look into their annual reports etc i mean but the problem in india is too too large too huge and it required massive amount of investment this investment mark harrison argues the rentier class in india the zamindars were not willing to give so health was relegated to either village administration or to corporation so calcutta corporation will be responsible even today you know now central government says you decide on your own it is the local body which is now left 
and there is no money where will the what will the local body do how far to what extent one can do some research on the interface between local body and public health some work has been done especially in terms of metros like calcutta and delhi etc bombay but uh, on other many two tier three tier cities etc towns what will they do so you have this problem of uh, uh, a kind of centralization which was highly ineffective centralization without responsibility so finally you give it all this to the local level and at the local level because finances are very strained and there are other considerations also of like corruption nepotism so forth that the that the opportunity is squandered another thing i would like to say that uh, which the british always argued oh india we can't do much there was a surgeon general in 1920 who said oh indians they breed like rats and die like flies simple one sentence they breed like rats and die like flies this is 1920 surgeon general of india is saying and it is during that period you will see that under 1919 reform health and education was given to indians you make a mess with it the british were not interested in health and education and this is how for right for a century it is indians who are managing our education and health whatever little progress we have been able to make is because of that indian participation and you know another term used was indianization of ims 1920 onward indian medical service has to be indianized indian civil service has to be indianized so all this came to us as a historical legacy today we have a strong infrastructure i'm not saying we don't have in education in health we have a, a strong infrastructure unfortunately these days emphasis has shifted to insurance that i am little doubtful instead of ayushman bharat we should have got public health centers in the kasbas and villages we should have strengthened the dispensary we are strengthening insurance companies and allowing them to go to a private hospital up to 5 lakh you spend and that forth but this is this is another kind of business this is the business in the name of private public partnership the private nursing homes one of my student in jadavpur university worked on private amrita bakhi did a thesis on the private nursing homes and how they operate and you know how they work so our the the, the government structure has virtually been sublet responsibility has been sublet to these private players insurance as well as i am not very hopeful of insurance and private uh, nursing homes i can afford it i don't mind going there but large number of people 95% of the indians would not be able to so public health if it incorporates public in the real sense then it has to be a a proper welfare measure it has to be taken as a primary welfare measure at par with national security disease security food security is as important as our frontier security this we have to accept if we don't accept fine with 1% gdp expenditure or 3% on education you just cannot hope to be world class you cannot hope to mlv this is a billion plus population and health is a huge issue i always argued in earlier also in my articles etc that in a tropical country only two things are crucial one health the other agriculture that's all these are not beings these are the end on their own you employ other means economic means political means social legislation means all kinds of thing to achieve the game in to achieve the result in these two areas one agriculture second health both together food security health security this is the real security which an ordinary human being ordinary citizen in india faces the rest fine it's 
your your diplomacy, your politics, your things, they are, we all pay for it, I am all. But, you know, these two should be put uppermost in mind. Uppermost in mind. So public health in that sense, in post-colonial India, we have given, I'm not saying that we neglected. That's how I'm alive today. That's how child mortality has fallen. Many epidemics we have been able to control. You know, we, we eradicated a smallpox which is not a mean achievement. Polio, <clears throat> leprosy, unfortunately leprosy is coming back again. But we have succeeded in some areas, but we need to be vigilant and we need to, and this uh, corona has put up a crisis, has put up something that uh, we need to plan accordingly. And it's going to be a long term affair, very, very long term affair. Today it is COVID-19, 10 years later some other <laughs> mutation would be there. Who knows? So we have to be on guard. You can't ignore public health, but you must at the same time ask the question, how public is public health? Is public health only AMRA hospital? What public health means? How public is public health? Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, can you take up one more comment and one more question? Is it possible? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Sorry for extending it uh, uh. long. Uh, so there is one question from uh, Kakoli Dash. She asked, uh, can we explain the present pandemic and that, that related spread through the framework of time-space compression? If it is so, does this annihilation of time and space create a different type of colonization of human body slash mind than the past. Tarwa, this question is addressed to Professor Kumar. Achha. Ek baat phir bata do no, jara dheere se. Slowly yeah. I read it uh -huh. out. Sometime I have... Sure, sure. Uh, can we explain the uh -huh. present pandemic and that related spread through the framework of time-space compression? If it is so, does this annihilation of time and space create a different type of colonization of human body slash mind than the past? No, no. Oh, this is a philosophical question. I, yeah, I, looks I, like. I, this is, I cannot venture to, but I must tell you, time and space correlation, well, time and space is a, is a kind of thing which, you know, in a pandemic situation, when it erupts, when it comes, you know, the, both the consideration of time as well as the space collapses. Because, you know, it is not that uh, it comes because of a, part, on a particular space, because of the characteristics of a space, or it doesn't come only because of a particular period. You know, I will not go for, as I warned you, citing uh, Karjan, that let us not go for environmental determinism. We accept environment as an important factor, but we should not go for environmental determinism. We should fall for it. It's a trap. Then everything you will explain in terms of, oh, because of the local. <clears throat> everything you will please explain because they ate uh, uh, bats and so forth because of certain food habit. That it's not only because of that. It's much more, it's much more complex. So therefore, it can, we shouldn't get into this trap of, we should take it into account, both local and, and, and time. But at the same time, we should be careful about other dimensions of, of, a, of the emergence of a disease and its spread too. There are many other dimensions. Yes, thank you. Thank you, and we will wrap up with the final comment. This comment is from uh, Professor Tridip Shantopakundu, who is a respected professor of our college, uh, Department of History. And his comment is, uh, to colonial supply korto. So maybe uh, I would request Professor Kumar and Professor Shamantu to comment on it. Uh, so that's his, uh, that is, you know, medicine for Kalajod is to be supplied by the colonial government itself. So uh, maybe you'd, you'd care to comment on that, or what should we do? Hello? Bolun. Hmm. <clears throat> so his comment is, uh, 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 colonial supply. So 
So this medicine for Kala Jaw used to be supplied uh, by the colonial government itself. So do you like to comment on it further or should we uh, wrap, wrap this uh, webinar? Uh, well, very quickly, you know, the government has to supply. There is no doubt about it. Because the poorer sections, the people won't be able to afford it. So the supply has to be from the, after all, you know, government exists for us. Government is us. Government is us. There is not a big deal to us. And we have responded. Look, AIDS medicine was so expensive earlier. But even our own pharmaceutical companies, they brought the cost lower. They put it, put it down in many ways. And AIDS is now, luckily, it is not the kind of endemic which we, uh, 10, 15 years ago, we feared. We have been able to grapple with it to some extent. If not eradicate, at least grapple with it. So similarly, it, it should be possible. Yes. Uh, may I request Professor Shamonto to respond to this comment, please? Thank you. Yes, I agree with uh, Professor Kumar that the government should supply it. I don't think the uh, substance of uh, this medicine of college, the urea stibamine, is so expensive. Uh, it can be uh, provided by the government. Uh, the government should take the responsibility to give it to free people, even at a very lower uh, you know, rate of uh, price. So, so governments should take the responsibility. And Kalarazot is not, not, not that much a problem in India. It was earlier in Assam and in Bihar and part of Bengal. But Kalarazot is not a problem nowadays. And the medicine is, I don't think so, that is uh, too much expensive. Well, I agree with Professor Kumar. That must, uh, the government must intervene and take the responsibility of uh, giving it to the poor people at a subsidized rate. Thank you. Thanks to both of you. And it's great. It's an honor to have you know, both of you with us, the same frame, as I've said before. And the lectures have been very enriching and very engaging. And I hope our students have also benefited from this. And, uh, you know, and one thing we have to remember, that they, they are not just great scholars. They've been great teachers over, over decades. And they've been great teachers, great mentors, along with great scholars. It's a very rare community, blending both teaching and you know, scholarly activities. So we are deeply grateful to you, Professor Kumar, and we are deeply grateful to you, Professor Shamonto, to have agreed to you know, deliver lectures for our college. And I'll, this webinar would not have been possible without uh, the unconditional support extended by our beloved principal, uh, Professor Amitabha Basu. We are fairly new in this college, me and Devashis and our whole department have supported us. And it's, it's, it's very, you know, you know, it's great, it's a very kind, kind of him to give us this opportunity to organize this webinar. And we, we are looking forward to more such opportunities in near and distant future. And uh, again, this, uh, I would like to next uh, thank next, you know, um, our technical committee, our organizing committee, other members of our organizing committee, uh, Dr. Koimal Ghosh, Dr. Onimesh Mandul, and uh, you know, Dr. Amarindu Shamanto. They have been really supportive. They have been of great help to us. And without them, the webinar would not have been possible. And we are equally thankful to uh, uh, Dr. Kajo Krishna Dey. He's a coordinator of our IQSE. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank our entire college community, uh, my seniors, my contemporaries, my juniors, and every member of our, of our college. And uh, thanks for supporting us, uh, supporting us. And next, I would like to thank all our participants. Thank you so much for being so patient. Being, you know, on the other side of uh, the virtual world for so long, and uh, you know, throwing up your questions, very interesting questions, and uh, thank you once again. And last but not the least, I'd like to thank my students. Many of them have been have been a part of this, you know, webinar, and uh, so my uh, our hearts go out to them. And once again, uh, Professor Kumar and uh, Professor Shamanto, we, we are really grateful to you and. We promise you, uh, this is not the end of it. You know, good lectures lead to claps, but great lectures lead to conversation and dialogue. So this is just a beginning of a dialogue. Okay, this will go on. And uh, especially, especially in today's scenario, history of medicine, history of science and uh, policy making is, is even is extremely important. And this dialogue will go on and on. And we are going to you know, um, keep nagging you in near and distant future, that we can promise in moments of intellectual vulnerability or academic you know, crisis, we're definitely going to bother you. So please bear with us in, in future. 
So uh, on this note, uh, on behalf of my department, and also thankful to uh, you know the other members of our department, Devashi Shamaladi, Nasreen, Subhash, uh, Kanchon, every everyone, and thank you for extending your support to us. And on this note, and uh, maybe Principal Sir would like to uh, say a few words, two three words, to you know conclude the to make uh, officially conclude this webinar, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, it is really a, uh, very much informative and I want to thank our esteemed uh, speakers for illuminating us. Uh, very good interactive session, so many questions are there and we are really uh, benefited from this uh, webinar and we are looking forward in future to organize more such uh, webinar. Uh, I want to thank everyone and uh, formally i want to uh, say that uh, it is the close of our webinar for today thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir thank you everyone